up, everyone? Welcome back to Daily Fantasy Sports, Picks and Bets, and The Mix, powered by the Mayo Media Net here on YouTube and presented by Jock Market. Download the brand new fantasy app for free. Use the promo code MMN. They're going to match the first 100 bucks for free. If it's free, it's for me. Did you miss me or did you miss me? Can't wait to dive into this week three main slate. Rate, review, and subscribe to the audio only pod. I'm going to ask you for a cartoon finger on the YouTube machine after I earn it, which, man, with the amount of work I just put in, I better. If you're new to the show, welcome up. Board. I mean, we're really doing it it's just so differently for the content and the amount of content that I consume, the amount of content that I produce. I try and make it really unique and really different. Enough of that. We need more of this. It's the fastest show in NFL absolutely anywhere. Doing the three pillars of profit. We're going to look at blue chips. We're using Run the Sims projections to find the best, highest projected players. We're going to go over some ownership as well. Then we're going to jump over to the penny stocks, the best values on a cost per point basis. Then I have some extra special jock market stuff for you people out there, right? That's what this show is all about. We're getting, I'm not saying we're getting away from the other formats, but being sharp at jock, jock market has really been the pathway to profit with all these new daily games. It's easily my favorite DFS, as much as we love it, it's a nine-team parlay. Let's not confuse that. Very sure people will make money at it, but it's a nine-team parlay. I like to play winner-take-all. I'm looking to make my money in the JM streets. All right, let's get up into it. We have zero seconds to spare. I don't have any extra time in the budget, but I keep smashing more information in there. But that's just how we do. Me and you, the Corks Dads crew, everybody, let's get it, yo. Before I go any further, the hat tip, the first one is for me. Yes, big surprise, me tooting my own horn. Hey, who else is going to do it if you don't, you know, if you don't love yourself? How the heck are you going to love somebody else? Anyway, check out the logos. I've always been a big kind of retro uniform guy. I love retro logos. I really do. If you're into that stuff, jump over to YouTube. Check it out. I went just absolutely crazy, as always, down the rabbit hole, finding every original logo from as far back as the 30s. Seriously, you got to check it out. There are pictures I've never seen before. I absolutely love some of these. Hopefully, they'll come back. All right, these are the blue chips and the highest projected players at every position, according to Run the Sims. Again, they do such phenomenal work. Hat tip to them. We're not going to spend too much time breaking it down, right? This is a projection-based show. This is a strategy-based show. You could get the handicapping and the analytics kind of elsewhere, right? That's why we have these projections. I could spend two hours explaining to you why good players are good, or I may have just done it right there. Good players are good. For the audio-only listeners, I am going to walk you through it. At the quarterback position, it's Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen at 27 points. Mahomes, Herbert, Burrow, and Cousins between 22 and 24. Always the most important thing to remember with quarterbacks and daily play. Hurts and Allen are the differentiators because of the running ability. The rest of the quarterbacks pretty much fall into a glob. I really try not to pay any kind of premium. And that's the lesson here. Let's take a look at the projection ownership for those players. Hurts and Allen at 9 and 10 respectively can get a bit high, especially for quarterbacks. But again, we know why. Mahomes at 7. Herbert and Burrow at 4. Now, granted, they come with hiccups. Herbert, I don't think, is going to play as of right now, but we don't know. Burrow up against the Jets. The public has pretty much had it with Joe Burrow. He still has tons of weapons and is a pop to go off for 3-15-3. That's just what it is. People are too into the most recent stats. So keep an eye on Joe Burrow with the 23-point projection up near the top. But his cost at 6.6, the lowest of the bunch here with the low projection, is how you kind of find the best blue chip, in my opinion, if you're in a large field. Right? Burrow would not be a cash play by any stretch but he really looks like a very strong tournament play this weekend the running backs we go it's McCaffrey and Fournette above 24 Mixon and Taylor above 21 Henry and Cook between 19 and 20 I have had trouble paying up for the elite backs we haven't really seen it from them last week in particular with Jonathan Taylor that's also why I advise people in jock market because the price doesn't change and that's one Edge, depending on how you look at it, the DFS has over Jock Market. When you lock into McCaffrey, you lock into Taylor, you can lock into the price. Jock Market, you can't do that because there is 
I don't even know how you put it. I guess there's no inherent leverage, right? You can't zero in on a cost and lever that cost. If it's popular, the price goes up. If it hits a certain point, you got to bail on it. We did just that. We avoided a lot of big misses last week. We did pretty good chasing cheap assets. That's just how you make money in stock market and the jock market. Just wait till we get into the value stuff. You really see what I mean. Fournette popping off the page. I know because of the low salary at 6.5, he's a full thousand bucks cheaper than anyone else, but he's also, that's reflected, I should say, in a 16% projected ownership. Sometimes you got to eat the chalk with that low cost against Green Bay. I, that one's up to you. In a cash play, it's going to be hard to get away from Fournette. He might be 100% owned. McCaffrey, 8% ownership. People are starting to get tired of him. Taylor at 9 Cook at 12, Henry at 8. I'm getting away from Henry and the Titans. We've just seen Henry get scripted out of way too many games until he goes off and not paying the premium there. Over to the wide receiver room. Cooper Cup, big shock. 20, check this out, I mean, this is ridiculous. Cooper Cup is projected for 27.9 points. Now, that's the highest on the slate. It's a full point higher than Hertz. Granted, we never want to overreact. We probably don't want to react at all to decimal points. We don't want to overreact to single points. But we do want to look at things in relation to the field. So 28 to 27 is only one point, right? You don't have to be a great mathematician to figure that one out. But by percentage, you know, to have, uh, you know, whatever it is, 2 or 3% back of the napkin math weed on the field, there's a reason for that. And then when you look at a guy like Justin Jefferson, who's in a smash spot projecting for 22 and a half, these cup projections are just ridiculous, man. I mean, and he's every bit that good. So just keep an eye on that. When it comes to chalk, that's the kind of chalk I'm willing to eat because he can rip the top off. There's very little to do as far as game strikes that can get him out of it. So all the cup, all the time until he's, you know, 3.7 billion DK bucks every week. Then to Diggs at 20, Chase very similar at 19, Devontae Adams and Amon Ross St. Brown both at 18, of course, with good reason. Let's look at the projection ownership. Cup, Diggs, and Amon Ross at 13 or higher, Amon Ross St. Brown at 17. I know everyone's going to like him. You probably got to get away from that. It. It's really hard in tournaments to score on that. Cash play. If you want to make Fournette and Amon Ra the staples of your cash lineup, you can do that ignoring projections. Other than that, I think then you have to get cute. You don't want to be too cute, especially in cash. But you also can't be too chalk. Or it's going to be, you know, the entire slate's going to come down to one or two players, which you don't really want that to happen. And to the salary, all really similar up at the top. Coop. Cooper Cup at 9.9, still worth every bit of it. Diggs at 7.7, why he's drawing the big ownership. The same for Amon Ross, 7.2, cheapest of the bunch at 17%. Again, that number's probably only going to go up. He's becoming really difficult to play in DFS. I'd rather get my exposure to Amon Ra in the prop market or in jock market where he hasn't really hit that elite, elite level yet. And that is one of the advantages to playing jock market. Again, where any bit of price that's left on the table, right? Because re remember, we're smart here, right? That's our thing, we're smart. So value is not just a cheap price. Value has to do, value is a rate stat, is what I mean to say. So it has to be a cheap stat that also yields, right? So we need high cost items, high ticket items can be values depending on what they return, right? So if you pay for a race car and you think it was 500 miles an hour, you got what you paid for. You know, if you paid 50 bucks for, you know, the Miata from 1986 and the thing doesn't start, you didn't get much of value because it's not going to get you to the finish line. So, again, you know, there's so much bad content out there. I really hope we're sticking out. If we are, you know, rate, review, and subscribe, do all that good stuff. Let's get into the tight end room before we get away from these amazing graphics. I cannot get over these logos. They are, they're so cool. They're downright distracting. I'm telling you, if you into the stuff get into the comments let me know which one is your favorite i think mine might be the lions i have an affinity for the orange buccaneers and then that that wild chiefs logo is just awesome the blue eagle just really really cool stuff all right tight ends come on kelsey at 20 and a half andrews at 17 7 so there's a gap b gap 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 to pitts and Ertz at 12 tight ends there's probably a really good lesson with tight ends and why they're so much more advantageous in jock market is because of that you know price like i said their price doesn't really catch up to the production so tight ends oftentimes are very profitable 
in Jock Market. Now that I have my hands on some of this data, I've been going back and scraping some more of the historical stuff. I'm going to share some of that with you in a little bit. It's really interesting. So, all right, that's enough. Let's get away from the blue chips. I already know it's good players are really good, but hopefully you got an idea of how to get to them. Let's just look at the ownership really quick. Pitts, Ertz, and Kelsey all at six or below. Kelsey going off is very expensive at 7.9. Andrew Smack in the middle, 6.9 salary, 8% projection. I think his is like, you know, the porridge is just right. If I were looking to save some money, it's easily Ertz. We've seen a lot more from him than we have from Pitt. Oh, and that is the first pillar of profit, man. How good is this show? All right, let's take a deep breath before we head on over to the Penny Stocks, everybody. All right, let's get at these Penny Stocks brought to you by Jock Market. Love that app. Download that bad boy. I'll see you in the G JM streets. I absolutely love it. I've been begging to do extra content. I may stick it on my Patreon page because I'm so into this. I really believe in a couple years, Jock Market will be at the fore of daily play. Again, because it's not an all or nothing game. I think people are, as it gets sharper and gambling becomes more available, people are getting tired of all or nothing, these binary plays. Like DFS, you basically win or you lose a lot. Jock Market, you could play and make 8%, 10% and, and grind a little bit and stay in the game and use principles that we use in the real world Again, in this game of ours, which I love so much. All right, so again, the penny, penny stocks, we're going to go by position, two quarterbacks, three running backs, five wideouts, and a tight end. This one in particular for the audio-only listeners. Hop on over to the YouTube, or as my kids call it, the red button. Do the screenshot, right swipe thingy thing, and check this out if you want to see all this. I think there's some really important lessons here. Again, I do put in some work to get this, and I have some pretty schnazzy helmets up. But I think aside from seeing the points and the salary, the work that we're doing here and showing you now is this cost per point analysis. Again, I mentioned value as a rate. We're going to apply some of that right now. We have a cemented salary, right? We spoke about that. We have our run the Sims projection. So we now can come up with a cost per point. Where then the last thing, the cherry on the top, is going to be the ownership percentage. I have all this stuff posted. Nicey nice, like a lemon ice. That is the key to jock market because we see direct correlations with ownership between the different sites. You see that reflected in the tight end. We'll get to that in a little bit. And that's the key to what I was getting at before. Maybe I put the cart in front of the horse just a little bit. The reason why tight ends are a better value in jock market than anywhere else is because they draw low ownership at DFS, it doesn't pull up their price, and the good ones score like wide receivers and are very profitable. So let's do it position by position, and here's your number one lesson as to why value, right, is not necessarily cheap. Jalen Hurts, 27-point projection, 7.6 salary, $280 a point. That's as low as she goes. He is the cheapest player on the board on a course per point. Basis. So when you think about the most expensive quarterback is the best value. Yes, he's that good. The expectations are that high. And he could pop the top off any slate. Plus his game script independent. Right, If they're down, he's running. If he's up, he got them there. So it's all about Jalen Hurts. And with the single digit ownership percentage, he is the guy you get with in all formats. Really wanted to drive home how being expensive does not disclude you from being a value. One last point to why the image is so important. I want everyone to be able to do this work on their own. Get familiar with the numbers. What do you notice about every number on this board? This lesson really applies more to main slates. Showdowns are, are nuts. You have to treat them as a separate entity. This is where we're making the majority of our money on the main slate. And I can tell you why, right? What do all of these cost per point, you know, hits have in common, they're all below $400 a point. And like, you know, that sounds kind of random, but it's not. Because that with the 50000 bucks, right, you got to average that to make two hundred, And 200 basically being the big winning score. Another way to think about that is if you take the 1000 salary and you multiply it between 3 and 4 to give yourself a range, if you cover that, then you covered 200 points, which hopefully will get you to the finish line across. You know, anywhere. If you don't, if you don't cash for two hundred, you, you fell into the slate. You fell into the chalk, or you just have some pretty rotten luck. All right, so hurts. Uh, just lesson on top of lesson on top of lesson. Get with Jalen Hurts against the Commanders. Their defense is very bad as well. Then it's Joe Burrow. 
Projection systems liking him for 23 points at 6.6. Cost per point very similar to Hertz. So similar value expected, just a lower salary. The big difference there is Burrow at 4%. Running backs, Fournette, Mixon, and McCaffrey all projecting for at least 22 points. Fournette, 6.5 cost. Mixon, 7.6. McCaffrey, 8.8. And that order is also the same as the value, right? So Fournette, the reason why he's popped so much is with the tremendous projection at the low salary, he's coughing up a 269 cost per point number, which is just off the page why he's drawing that ridiculous ownership percentage at 16%. Again, I don't know if you can get away from him in cash. I don't think you can get with him in tournaments. You just have to kind of... You just kind of have to hope. Uh, Tampa Bay offense hasn't been like a hang at 30 points anyway, so just the hope that he has a good game, but it just doesn't wreck you. Mixon, I think with the regression, positive regression, as I expected for Cincinnati, I think Mixon is the most script independent. 342 cost per point, 14 ownership a bit high, but he's starting to catch a ton of balls, so I think you can get with that. McCaffrey, we've seen the usage, we just haven't seen the explosion. The thing that worries me here is the Saints' defense. They don't really look like that front seven is about to get yoked. Quarterback play's been extremely bad for Carolina, so I'm not sure if I'm really into these value plays. I think you just have to know how to apply it. As far as jock market goes, any player on this list... That's blow, let's call it the triple nickel, 555, which will give you a little bit less than a 5 to 1 return if you happen to crack the number 1. I mean, most of these players can do that. Now, you're not going to get Hurts underneath the triple nickel. He's on the blue chip list. I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. The blue chip list, I like to draw the line at $8. Let's even call it in between 8 and 9 8 50 even. Reason being $25 top share on jock market. We want to at least get 3 to 1 return. It's a 200 player slate, as much as you like Josh Allen. But those are already those odds are already kind of stacked against us. So I'm very careful about chasing up the top. But the way these boys run and score and do everything that they do, it's okay to go after. But we're never going up above. I'm not going above nine or ten dollars for players. And again, we're going to cover that in a little bit. Exactly why. So there's your running backs. You're going to have to make some decisions on your own there. You can also follow my work on Twitter at John Legaza, John L-A-G-H-E-C-C-A. Search MLB NFL Moving Averages. You may know me from The Athletic. Gil Alexander's a number game. I also have my own Patreon page going on right now. It's free for another week, showing off just all the goods. It's everything else that we can, like, can't fit into the show, plus MLB stuff, player props, and a CLV betting model. It's just it's so, it's so ridiculous, man. It's so ridiculous. In fact, everyone just paid for their yearly you know, subscription with the FIVTT part that smashed today let's do the wide receivers at the top here it's russell gage but 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 big shaking butt here even though he's breaking the cost per point on the wide receiver side i think he got downgraded to do not practice i don't know if they're protecting him in bubble wrap everybody in tampa bay is hurt so when it comes to tampa you're gonna have to be weary the upside to this is the general public is not going to touch these guys in big scale tournaments so cash games avoid him Big tournaments, you're playing gauge as long as he's playing. Jock Mark would be absolutely one gauge because that low ownership percentage, it's at eight here. I think it may drop from there unless we get crazy news like Jones out gauge full practice, which I don't think we're going to after DNP. Gage is going to be wonderful. All, Tampa Bay in general is going to be an awesome jock market play because you pay low and any one of them has a chance to cover the entire slate, the entire portfolio. And that's the difference, again, one of the other great event signs with DFS. A few hits in jock market, the entire portfolio is in the black. A few zeros in DFS, and you go home empty handed. Everybody knows this. I didn't invent this, or I'm, like, I'm bad at it. All right, then it's Curtis Samuel, who I absolutely love. I'd much rather go there. Cost per point at 349, 15 point projection, 5.1 salary, 11% ownership right in the middle. Samuel is awesome. I'm watching these Commanders games. He is he is like the offense on that team. I know everyone's in love with Dotson. He's getting the red zone looks. I get it. Everyone loves McLaurin. He's got the skill. I get it. Samuel is the top priority on this team. When he's not catching the ball, they're creating running carries for him. Right. Cooper Cup, another example of how being the most expensive player does not disclude you from creating value because if these projections were to play out and he got 28 points on 9 per 9 salary, he got dropped it at 354 as a perfectly acceptable and viable value. So remember, you can pay up as long as the expectations are there. And if you trust in the RTS projections, you're getting just that. To Jacoby Myers, who gets you that same cost per point, but at the low salary, which we need to look for. And T. Higgins right in the middle, right? This porridge is too hot. This porridge is too cold. T. Higgins porridge is just right. 6.1 DK bucks. We know he's a number one type wideout. 369 cost per point as well. Very similar to Jacoby 
Myers similar projections as well. So I think they'd be more of a cost determinant there, right? It's cost dependent, but if I have a choice, you've got to go Higgins because of the top side. And I think people are, are over are over high in the Jets. That is the fastest way to lose your money is to get high in the Jets. All right, close it out with Zach Ertz, 12-point projection. I mean, he's doing wide receiver one type things as far as route run and receptions, target rates, and stuff like that. So the double-digit projection, 4.6 salary, 377 cost per point, but the 5% ownership. Ertz looks like he's going to be a key to large field play this week for us. Arizona is, you know, they're just wild right now. The defense is not stopping anybody, so the offense is constantly, constantly in go get a mode. So we're going to be looking for Ertz to do some work. Absolutely expecting that. Yeah, he's, his projections are pretty thick. He's expecting at least like eight or nine targets as always. So there's your penny stocks. Hopefully you learn something about value, application, being able to discern price from value and if you did learn a single thing please stick your cartoon finger inside me what yes press the like button on youtube it matters way more than it should i really do appreciate everyone that presses the like button you don't believe it i i've been told right i have a very high like to view ratio and i'm like what is (laughs) who who talks about this stuff like are we talking about is the show any good it doesn't matter. That's the last thing anybody cares about. So if you don't want the show to get canceled, <laughs> then press the like button. That's really what content creators should be saying because that's more of the truth. And again, I'm really just so transparent. It's like basically to a flaw. All right, so that's the second pillar. One more time. Let's take a deep breath for the next and new segment. So get your jock market, you know, pencils and pens out. This next section is where it's really at. All right, let's get it. I got your jock tips here. I got my hands on some historical data. This is the main slate from last week. We're just going to do a few quick lessons because we only have a few quick minutes. But this is the thing that separates this show, the mix here on the Mayo Media Net, from the rest of the quote-unquote jock market shows that have the name in the title but don't seem to cover jock market. I'm not sure if they really play. Okay, what can we discern? What can we learn from the board? Well, I'll tell you right off the bat... Paying the highest price did not necessarily get you a return. Cup, Taylor, Devontae Adams, Chase were the top five highest players by share cost. They were the only four players above $10. They all lost at least 80% ROI, except for Cup, who returned 25%. So think about that. Cup had a monster game and a 25% return. That's not great for the amount of money that you had to put on him. We kind of want to go the other way. Now, what happens if we go the other way? Now, granted, if you're spending the dollar, the min amount, you're not really going to do very well. However, I would like to point out that there were some profits in the dollar range. If you can locate opportunity. So that is going to be the goal. Keep that as objective number one for my fellow cheapskates that are just looking to hammer low prices. They're out there. Matt Collins closed at $1.14. He more than doubled up. He didn't even have that good of a game. Mike Gusecki closed at $1.22. He nearly tripled. He did not have that good of a game. Nelson Aguilar closed at $1.30. He had a monster game. He went up 600%. Now, if you played a Nelson Aguilar prop, right, you didn't get 600%. If you stuck Nelson Aguilar in your DFS lineup, yeah, he might have done okay. He doesn't necessarily cash. But that's the point. That one play, that one diamond in the rough probably floated your entire portfolio. I had Garrett Wilson, who was phenomenal as well. Actually, I think I had him the last two weeks. Let's get a little bit further. When you hit this pocket below $2, list of players that profited. Evan Ingram, Prashad Perryman, Logan Thomas, Richie James, Nico Collins, Garrett Wilson that I mentioned, Tony Pollard, Corey Davis, J.D. McKissick, Chris Olave, Damian Pierce were all at $2 or below. And remember, you get a dollar back if the bottom share is, is a zero, right? The bottom return is a zero. You still get a dollar back. These players were a dollar a share with a chance at $25 return. There is no other place to find that. Now, it's funny. People scoff. Like, what are the chances of a guy at the bottom finishing at the top? Nelson Aguilar almost did it. Garrett Wilson almost did it. They finished 8th and ninth 
on the slate. So there are pockets of profit below two bucks. When I tell you that you can make money on this $100 free promo, I absolutely mean it. I absolutely mean it. Buying trashy players. Rashad Bateman was at below three bucks. David Montgomery below three bucks. Drake London below three bucks. Brandon Ayuk at three bucks. I mean, these are all really good, viable players. If you're patient and willing to shop, you go to the jock market. All players searched by price. Let's scan a little bit further. Let's see what else we could find. I know I really wanted to focus on that, how paying up really could kind of... It's not like it's necessarily going to get you smoked, but the return has to be proportionate with the spend. So it's not like, oh, cup is awesome, so we have to spend. That's kind of donkey play. Jock market is sharp play. Everything goes on the scale and everything must be meticulous, like meticulously weighted on the scale. You really have to be wary of that. I think, I could, I think someone corrected me on that in the comments. I don't know. I stopped sleeping when uh, football season started to overlap with baseball. But hopefully, everyone got just a little, a little taste there of how there are pockets of profit here. One more spot that I wanted to focus on, because I do have another minute, is... I think the prime spot for profit, if we're looking for the top, right? So, again, you have to understand when when you roll around with pigs, you expect it covered in mud. So, if you're going to be chasing players closing near the minimum, you know there's a chance to get hung out to dry. You know, that's what it is. But I'm looking at this $6 range. Let's call it... $5.50 to $6. There's just this nugget of profit there that seems to happen, and it it makes sense. The market is pushing up good players, but they don't know everything. So we do want to keep an eye on players on the rise. Those players this week, where are they going to make sense? Nick Chubb, Amon Ross St. Brown, Aaron Jones, Carson Wentz, Tariq Hill. We're all... Below six fifty, always keep that twenty five dollars in mind. Where we could still hit the four to one, we'd love that. That's a really good spot. So maybe I, if I could back up, I am sorry. A lot of my work is on that's, it's on the fly, right? We're building a boat in the middle of the ocean. The wind nature of this game is about thinking. I say triple nickel before five five five. You show me simple. I think we should make that six fifty. Okay, so let's call penny stock ceiling six fifty, blue chip ceiling. 850 I'm going to call it $9, though. You, you really don't want to get outbid on your favorite player because John said don't go above 850 Like, that's stupid, right? That's silly. If the player is the guy you want and you have the return coming, you go up the few sets. Now, you can't do that all the time, right? You have to save that for the few players that are in that position on that borderline that you also think can pop the top. If that's the case, again, be willing to be a bit malleable other than that, be really, really cheap. A jog market's all about being cheap. Like, a super duper cheap. We're going to be mining the bottom again on the Patreon page. I may even do a show for this because it, it, this is how we're going to make money. They it opened the field to 200 players. So, finding those guys near the min that, like, double up and triple up. Think about it. They double up and triple up getting, like... You get a guy at the bottom that gets, like, four grams and 40 yards, he's going to double up. It's awesome. You know, you can't really get that anywhere else so all right i think that was a good little section for the jock tips i'm gonna try and get this in this we're gonna do a quick review because i think that's gonna point us to what players what teams and what positions and stuff like that are going to direct us to the profits you know i wasn't going to leave you out in the cold without a player prop or two so i got two props here let's try not to get stung i can't go too much into the handicapping because of the time but usually in player prop play winning is Happening with good players on good teams and losing is bad players or bad teams trying to, you know, project catches on Kyle Phillips, right? And players of that ilk. So let's go to the best players with the lowest rec props, right? That sounds like a good combination. We're going to go with Travis Kelsey and T. Higgins. Both of these boys just really are awesome. I mean, I'm not sure I really have to sell anybody on how good Travis Kelsey is, but we have seen, you know, elite usage probably, like we expected, 75% of snaps. He's run 67 routes, 22% of the team target share. We'd love that because of the quality of those targets. He already has 13 catches. 
2.6 yards per route run, 10.8 yards per target, all the wonderful stuff we love, 29% of his team's air yards, and he's coming off and just okay game, right? So just okay games for Kelsey are basically four games. I think he went over 120 in the first game. So how soon the public forgets he's going to be targeted early and often in this one against Indianapolis, who has a very good run defense. Don't be surprised if the Chiefs abandon that. And money's even coming in on the Colts. So if the Colts get ahead, you're going to Kelsey. If the Colts are not ahead, it's because Kelsey got him there. So give us Travis Kelsey. And then give me T. Higgins, who we mentioned before, up against my J-E-T-S. Jets, 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 Jets. He also has some really, really thick numbers. See, the lesson here, I think, people, is be careful of chasing season-long stats in a pro football, that's what's going to get you in trouble. It's a game of context and nuance. Let me just explain what I mean. So T. Higgins was hurt. He only played 25 snaps in the first game. Well, in the second game, he, ran, he played 60 snaps. That was 90% of snaps. Okay, that is really thick. That's exactly, exactly what we're looking for. 29% team target share in that game. 50% of the air yards, right? Those are the usage stats that matter. That's the kind of usage that we're looking for. But if you're looking for it on a season basis, it kind of drops all those things. 23% target per route run in that game. And all the lovely stuff, almost two yards per run, a bit lower than I would have thought. But again, I think all these things are going to improve. So it could be Higgins against the Jets defense that... Again, people are chasing season-long stats because the Jets, like, pass yards against are not that bad. That's not how you do this, people. Seriously. That's not how you do this. The Jets have one of the worst pass DOVOAs in the league. They only have three sacks. They have a 5% adjusted sack rate, 7.6 yards per attempt. They've allowed over 11 yards per completion. Okay, there haven't been enough completions to hurt them. The Jets played the Browns and the Ravens and working the ground on them. The Jets' defense is not good. It's not good. The Bengals have struggled. They're also very good. Two games, not enough to throw the baby out with the bathwater. The Bengals are really good. I think they're going to correct it. Give me Higgins to go over 67. All right. We are up against the time limit, and that will do it for the fastest show in NFL absolutely anywhere. Tell your friends about that bad boy. Rate, review, and subscribe to the audio-only pod. Hopefully, you know, you learned something, had some fun. Who knows? Maybe we'll make a buck or two as well. And if you think that's the case, please press your cartoon finger down below. Get up in the comments. I do my very best to get to you. Follow me on the Bird app at John Legaza. Check out the Patreon page. It's free for another week to check out all the goodness, man. If we don't hit a single bet during the season, I really think the Patreon page is worth it anyway. The betting lessons, the Q&A, and the CLV betting model has been tremendously profitable thus far. Again, my stuff is going to be the more advanced stuff. You know, if you're really into that, if you like the thinking stuff or you want help building tickets or strategies, how to stay in these businesses in the long run, all that stuff, that's what I'm here for you, the Cork Stats crew. So thanks for picking up what we're putting down here on the mix at the Mayo Media Net. Make sure you download the Jock Market app, use the code MMN, get that free 100 bucks. I, and I showed you now. Like, that was kind of the point. I, I needed that historical data to show you how with the $100, you have more than enough. That's just, you're going to make money tomorrow. You're gonna that money is enough to take four or five whacks at it. You're gonna have if you're smart, you take twenty of twenty dollars of the hundred and budget it for the next five weeks. We're gonna profit over the next five weeks if you play in this manner, where you know again you have a set budget. We're playing smart, making sure we're maximizing ROI. And, and man, I absolutely love the show, and I really care about you guys because you spend your precious time with me. So that's why I work so hard, you know, on this show. Uh, I guess that'll do it, yo. I catch you on the flip side. Remember that one last thing, man. When you work this hard, it feels a lot less like luck, don't it? That's right.